In 1542, King Henry VIII made witchcraft punishable by death in England. The surge in witchcraft accusations heightened public anxiety, leading to a vicious cycle of more allegations. The targets were often elderly, poor women, many of whom had pet cats, as these were seen to be familiars. In 1692, the infamous Salem witch trials took place, where 19 people were executed for allegedly practicing. And year after year, innocent people, usually women, were tried and killed for rumoured witchery until the last execution took place in 1782 when Anna Goldie, a Swiss housemaid, was decapitated with a sword. In total, somewhere between 30 and 60,000 people were executed and many suffered through horrific torture before being put to death. Now, as many more people are seeking holistic approaches to well-being, exploring alternative spiritual practices, getting back to nature and generally trying to enjoy themselves a bit more, there has been a noticeable increase in the interest in witchcraft and related practices in the recent years. And although generally attitudes to practicing has changed, just think it wasn't until 1951 that the Witchcraft Act was repealed in the UK and until then you could actually be fined or imprisoned if you claim to be able to use magical power. So in the event of a normie uprising, history rewinding, or a crazed superstitious king rewriting the rules, here are five quick tips on how to avoid being hunted. Number one, keep a low profile. Avoid drawing any unnecessary attention to yourself. Try keeping that skin covered. Renowned witch hunter Matthew Hopkins had a method for identifying a witch that involved pricking a devil's mark, which was what he called any mole or blemish with a retractable needle. When the accused did not react in pain to the needle, he would say that's proof that they are a witch. Also, you may want to keep your pointy hats and flowing robes to undercover coven gatherings and wear casual, boring, everyday attire when in the mundane world. You're less likely to draw attention this way. Yes, that means putting the broom back in the broom closet. Number two, blend in. Try embracing local customs and traditions and transform what they mean to you. By becoming more eclectic, utilizing symbolism and metaphors, a lot of your practice can be disguised to look like something completely boring. Think back to that time studying poetry at school and learn to read between the lines of everyday ritual, like stirring your intentions into your morning coffee with cinnamon for abundance, like popping something meaningful that may or may not represent an enemy into the washing machine on a really hot wash. You could start a new hobby, whether it's collecting herbs for cooking or studying ancient symbols. Having a plausible cover story can divert suspicion. But be careful, ladies. Try not to get too knowledgeable. Smart ladies who know a lot about herbs are awfully suspicious. Number three, choose your allies wisely. Building strong relationships both inside and outside the witch community makes you less vulnerable to accusations. Unfortunately, your reputation and social standing will play a part in whether you will be targeted. Your neighbor might throw a witch accusation your way just because you're old and ugly. But beware, making the wrong friends can be a massive problem for you. As if your so-called ally is put on the stand for witchcraft, they may just get away with it by ratting you out instead. Number four, run and hide. One of the ways people avoided the witch trials in Salem was literally to escape Salem. Some say that witches used a network of caves to get around undercover. Sarah Bridges Clays, or Cloys, apparently fled to a local cave after escaping from jail while awaiting her sentence. If you're not a good runner, try swimming away. After all, as an accused witch, when placed in a body of water, you should naturally float. Only the innocent drown. Number five, confess your sins. If all else fails, if you have the devil's mark, 
have been acting suspiciously, are old and ugly and got caught. Try confessing your sins. Apologize to the people and at least avoid execution. Tituba was an enslaved woman in Salem who, when on trial for witchcraft, confessed to working with Satan, including elaborate details of meetings with the devil and participation in dark rituals. She spoke of demons and signing the devil's book in blood, and for that, she was spared her life. For, as a confessed witch, she was no longer a threat to the community. So, let me know what you think. If you've got any more ideas for how to get away with this, drop, drop them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a quick thumbs up and share it with your friends. You never know, there may be a witch hiding amongst you keeping a low profile already. Let us know in the comments how you would avoid execution and find us on a bunch of other socials for lots more witchy, weird and wonderful content.